<laughs> but at any time, he can get right back to that message. Uh-oh. At any time. Uh, I think this might be a good time. At any time, you can. <laughs> <laughs> That's so addictive. <laughs> Just by pulling down, tapping no. on that, takes him right to uh, this. Now, as he starts typing, see on my side where there's the three dots in the balloon? That lets me know he's currently responding. Well, I'll check maybe some other messages while he's doing so. <laughs> so then when he sends the message, you see where it's sent? He gets a little delivered. It already knows it's been delivered right to my device. And when I tap on his message, it sends a read receipt saying, read, 11.15 AM. He knows I've read it. So read receipts, great. <laughs> we can also send uh, high quality photos and videos. Let me go ahead and choose a photo here. All right, maybe we can have a picnic by the bridge, Oz. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> uh, send him a little picture again. You can tell from the dots on his side that I'm composing it right now. Send it off. And again, we go over Wi-Fi as well as 3G. Sends it over. And again, he gets it. Nice, high quality. And the entire transmission is encrypted over the air. And again, I'm on my iPad, so it supports iPad, iPod Touch, and iPhone. Thanks, Joss. Can't wait for lunch. So iMessage, and we're actually building this on the push notification system we've built so we know how to scale this. We have incredible features here in iOS 5. The notification system, which is just you know, really nice. Newsstand makes it even better to read your newspapers and magazines right on your iPad or iPhone. Great Twitter integration, a new reminders app. You can be PC free if you want and the new iMessage application. And these are just 10 of the more than 200 new user features. There's really something for everyone in iOS 5. And there's other things like AirPlay mirroring. You can now mirror your entire iPad 2 right to your television wirelessly using Apple TV. Wi-Fi sync to iTunes. Before, you had to. Yeah, exactly. Before, before, you had to go back and plug into your computer to sync. And now, when you are charging at night, let's say, your iOS device will automatically find iTunes over Wi-Fi and sync with it. And before it syncs, it'll back itself up. So you automatically get backed up every single day. There's also some really nice new multitasking gestures. So you can just flick right between your apps. It's really nice. Well, not only is there something for every one of our customers, there's something for every one of our developers. Some great new development tools, including significant enhancements to Xcode instruments in the simulator. Even Core Image. We brought over the powerful Core Image framework from Mac OS X to iOS. This allows developers to do complex image operations like red eye reduction, face detection, right from within their apps. So you're asking yourself, when are you getting it? And the answer is, we are giving a developer seed to you today. This is going to be great for the conference as you learn about all the new APIs and all of the sessions this week. You can go and use those APIs immediately using your seed. And iOS 5 will ship to all of our customers this fall. iOS 5 will support the same devices that we supported with our last software update. So that's the iPhone 3GS and iPhone 4, all the iPads, iPad and iPad 2, and the third and fourth generation iPod Touch. And that is iOS 5. Thanks. And that is the second of the software products we want to tell you about today. To tell you about the third, I'd like to turn it back over to Steve. Good job.
Thanks. So, you like everything so far? Good. Well, I'll try not to blow it. So, I get to talk about iCloud. We've been working on this for some time now, and we're really excited about it. Um, about 10 years ago, we had one of our most important insights, and that was that the PC was going to become the digital hub for your digital life. What did that mean? Well, it meant that that's where you were going to put your digital photos. Where else were you going to put them? Your digital video off your digital camcorder. And of course, your music, right? You were going to acquire it in the device or potentially on your Mac. Uh, and you were going to basically sync it to the Mac, and everything was going to work fine. And it did for the better part of 10 years. But it's broken down in the last few years. Why? Well, because the devices have changed. They now all have music. They now all have photos. They now all have video. And so if I acquire a song, I buy it right on my iPhone, I want to get that to my other devices. Right, I pick up my iPad and it doesn't have that song on it. So I have to sync my iPhone to my Mac. Then I have to sync my other devices to the Mac to get that song. But then they've deposited some photos on the Mac. So I have to sync the iPhone again with the Mac to get those photos. And keeping these devices in sync is driving us crazy. <laughs> so we've got a great solution for this problem. And we think this solution is our next big insight, which is we're going to demote the PC and the Mac to just be a device, just like an iPhone, an iPad, or an iPod Touch. And we're going to move the digital hub, the center of your digital life, into the cloud. Because all these new devices have communications built into them. They can all talk to the cloud whenever they want. And so now, if I get something on my iPhone, it's sent up to the cloud immediately. Let's say I take some pictures with it. Those pictures are in the cloud, and they are now pushed down to my devices completely automatically. And now everything's in sync with me not even having to think about it. I don't even have to take the devices out of my pocket. I don't have to be near my Mac or PC. Now, some people think the cloud is just a hard disk in the sky, right? <laughs> and you take a bunch of stuff, and you put it in your Dropbox or your iDisk or whatever, and it transfers it up to the cloud and stores it, and then you drag whatever you want back out on your other devices. We think it's way more than that, and we call it iCloud. Now, iCloud stores your content in the cloud, and wirelessly pushes it to all your devices. So it automatically uploads it, stores it, and automatically pushes it to all your other devices. But also, it's completely integrated with your apps. And so everything happens automatically, and there's nothing new to learn. It just all works. It just works. Now, you might ask, why should I believe them? They're the ones that brought me mobile me. <laughs> it wasn't our finest hour. <laughs> Let me just say that. But we learned a lot. Now, the three core apps in mobile me were contacts, calendar, and mail, three things we'd obviously like kept up to date. We've thrown them away. We've re-architected and rewritten them from the ground up to be iCloud apps. And we've put them on all of our devices. So as an example, in contacts, when I make a new contact on my iPhone, it's automatically brought up to the cloud where it's stored on the cloud. 
right? The truth is on the cloud. And then it's automatically pushed down to my other devices so they're all in sync. It's that easy. I just update a contact on my iPhone and don't even think about it. And that contact is updated on all my other devices. And if I change it on any device, it's updated on all devices wirelessly, automatically, without me doing a thing. So that's contacts. Here's calendars. Works much the same way. I make a new calendar event on my iPhone. It's stored in the cloud. And it's pushed to my other devices. Pretty cool. We've also added calendar sharing. So as an example, if I'm sharing a, a few calendars with my wife, school and soccer calendars, let's say, right? And I add a new calendar for a teacher-parent conference on my phone. It's, again, automatically pushed up to the cloud and automatically pushed to my wife's iPhone. If she adds, if she adds an appointment for a soccer game, again, goes up to the cloud and back to my iPhone. It's that simple. And so calendars has, it stores your calendars in the cloud, changes on any device or push to all your devices, and we have shared calendars. And we think you're going to love the new calendars. It just works. And then we have mail. Mail was in the best shape of all. But it's even better now. We give you a mail account at, at me.com. Your new messages, again, are pushed to all your devices. And like we're used to, your inbox and folders are all kept up to date on all devices. So that's mail. And no ads. We build products that we want for ourselves, too, and we just don't want ads. So we can't get there. So these are the three apps that form the core of MobileMe. We used to sell them for a subscription price of $99 annually. As of today, this product ceases to exist. And those three apps are now going to be free. But we didn't stop there. We've got three more apps that we've brought into the iCloud universe. The first is, of course, the App Store. The App Store, you've bought a lot of apps so far. And you can buy them, of course, directly on your devices. Maybe the app you want isn't on the device you've got with you. So for all your purchase history now, you can see it on all your devices, even if the app's not there. And we've added this button here, which is download from the cloud. And if you want that app on that device, you just push that button, and that app is automatically sent to that device. Right? And there's no extra charge. No extra charge. Now, We've done that for your purchase history. What about for devices you buy in the future? Well, for devices when you buy them in the future, you want to buy Yelp, let's say. The cloud downloads it to all your devices, again, at no extra charge, all automatically. So that's what we're doing with the App Store. iBooks, same thing. You've got your purchase history of all the books you bought on any device. You want to get it on your iPhone, say. Just push the button. It downloads to that device. When you buy a new iBook, let's say you want to buy this book here, The Wave. It downloads it to all your devices now. And if you're reading it on one device, let's say you're reading it on your iPad, and you've just got to run. You get to a page, you bookmark that page, that bookmark is sent up to the cloud and stored, and again, pushed to all your other